In today's video I'll show you how to create vocal chops. First you'll need a vocal line. You could record one yourself or find a sample you like. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. We can change. Then you should decide if the rest of your composition will be built around that sample or you already have a tune and want to use vocal chops to complement it. I will do the latter and use the bass pad combo as the main sample. This part is in D minor, so ideally you need your vocal part to be in the same key. Tempo isn't that important because we will cut and sync it anyway. So if I stretch the vocal sample, it should actually work well together with the rest of the track. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. We can change. You don't always have to use same key samples because later it can be transposed, but I recommend you do so, it will be much easier. There are a few different ways you can create vocal chops. Most obvious would be to use scissors to cut audio and then pick different parts and transpose them. It's good if you want to stitch some lyrics together, but I think it takes too much time. And if you want to generate melodic ideas, then using quick sampler would work much better. You just drag your sample to create a new quick sampler track. We all make mistakes, we all make mistakes. We... Now you should switch to slice mode, and Logic will detect transients and place markers that let you use your keyboard to trigger different parts. We all mistakes. To make it sound more interesting, I want to add a few effects before I start editing it. I'm going to use pitch correction or autotune, compress it a little bit, and add some spatial effect or reverb. Now that sounds more inspiring. And also I'll switch mode to white keys only. Triggering slices that way makes more sense to me, since the sounds are not actually attached to corresponding keys on the piano. The very first thing you should do is review positions of the markers and find sweet spots, so you have nice cuts to play with. I think this will work just fine. I'm going to switch to mono so sounds don't overlap. And next step would be to experiment with patterns. You can use piano roll or step sequencer to position triggers. Or use your MIDI keyboard, your drum pads, to find parts you like before recording them. It might take a while. The more melodic original sample is, the better results you'd get. When I find something I like, I usually run it through pitch correction to further shape overall melody. First I start with the key of the track, which is D minor in this case, and see what I can do from there. I think D minor pentatonic work well, so I will leave it at that. Next I can use quick samplers tools to edit the sound. I'm going to start with the filter. I like that. Let's add some modulation. I want it to slowly move from left to right, so let's assign a level 1 to a pan knob. Okay, so this is the texture of the sample, and now I can use the rest of the tools to shape it further. Let's see what happens.
and finally I can change sensitivity. Logic will reduce the amount of the markers and it will dramatically change the pattern of the vocal chops. So that is a quick way to try out different ideas without the need of editing actual MIDI notes. You get the idea. At any point you can just replace the sample and try something else, or rearrange MIDI pattern. I like that you can use melodic samples to quickly generate something new with this easy approach. So give it a try and have fun.